Well, greetings, one and all, in the powerful name of the, our living Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Bob Hagen. This is another edition of As He Leads on the Uptime uh, Church Community Network here. And I uh, want to, um, first of all, welcome you into the month of November. My goodness, where is time going? And Election Day is right around the corner. Uh, but I have for you today, I have some good news for you. In the midst of all the uh, chaos and negativity that is going on in the world today, uh, we have an anchor for our soul, and that's God and his word. And uh, the peace that we have when we make the Lord Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives. What I'd like to do is um, start off by going into uh, the third epistle of John and the first the first four verses. And the title of this teaching will be, What is God's Will? And I don't pretend to be able to um, identify or def define all of what God's will is, but I think I know a little bit. And excuse me, hopefully by the end of this, you'll be excited and you want to go into it yourself. Uh, you're going to want to adventure, take the adventure, that's what I call it, of um, being a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, a believer, a Christian, if you will. So um, first of all, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, get into 3 John. And we'll start off in, in uh, verse 1. The elder unto the beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, even as thou walkest in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Uh, John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Uh, it was interesting here because a lot of times this second verse, I wish above all things I may prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. They take the first part of it. I wish above all things that I may prosper for the prosperity gospel. And they build things around that. And <clears throat> I'm not going to get into a whole lot of um, what the prosperity preachers teach or anything like that. I don't want to do that today. But uh, the prosperity is sound health in body. And it, it, what it means, uh, prosperity and being in health means uh, sound health in body and uncorrupt in doctrine. Where in the world did you get that? That's what the uh, word hugeino in the Greek means. So I wish above all things that you may have a healthy body and follow sound doctrine. And uh, how do we know what sound doctrine is? Uh, many years ago, I was challenged to take God's word and to read it and to get to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the phrase that I was told. And it was not like uh, he was forcing his way or kicking his way into the door of my heart, but he was gently entreating me, if you will, to... Uh, spend a little bit of time getting to know them. And I, I exhort you folks to do that too, because it's, it's a great adventure. Uh, uncorrupt in doctrine. It's one of the things that we really have a problem with today in the world. There's so many different doctrines. There's so many different uh, people have different ideas, different ways of looking at things. Um, I have a certain uh, belief system. You know, there are things that I, may have taught on here before. I'm not going to apologize for them. The, my belief in the operation of the uh, manifestation of the spiritual gifts, I'm not going to back down on that because I still believe we need them in this day and time. But also, I think we need a healthy doctrine, if you will. We need something that's sound. And uh, how do we know that, that the Bible is sound? Uh, how did we come upon this Bible? You know, how, how, do the, how are these words made available to us so that we can know what sound doctrine was? Now let's go to um, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 
And we're going to roll on over. Rolling, rolling. <laughs> I always think of rawhide when I say All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The word says here, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Inspiration of God, Theopanustos. God breathed the scripture to the Old Testament prophets who wrote it, to the men who wrote the New Testament, um, to put down as an instruction book. And it's, and it's profitable. Anybody that's in business knows what making a profit is all about. It's not evil to make a profit, as some political leaders say. There's nothing wrong with making a profit because when you make a profit, then you can hire people and they can make a profit. For reproof, that's bringing you back when you've erred. And then for correction, for instruction in righteousness. It's very important. The, the instruction in righteousness, we don't get the instruction in righteousness from reading the New York Times or watching television news. We get instruction in righteousness from going to the inspirer, if you will, of all true doctrine, reproof and correction. And that's, that's God. And through the finished, the completed work, if you will, of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the man of God may be perfect, truly perfected unto all good works. I mean, we're not perfect in our, our bodies, obviously, but spiritually we're perfect. We have the mind of Christ. I love that verse that says, we, you have the mind of Christ. I, I really, that, that would be my goal would be to have the mind of Christ and never doubt, never doubt, never, never question the, the authority of, of the word that the father has given to me ever. Um, but what happens is we have doubts in life. We're, we're tempted. We're, ha we have different things that happen that, um, that come up uh, that cause us to fall short. You know, the word says all of sin and, and come short of the glory of God. We, we all need a um, anchor for our souls, if you will. We need to have uh, a reason uh, and a reason to keep going, if you will, because there are people who just give up, you know, and I have felt that way in my life. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there are times when I get very discouraged. Um, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with, with, um, admitting sometimes that you're discouraged. I did a teaching recently on, uh, uh, not being discouraged, you know, looking to God as the encourager. He is the one that on the day of Pentecost, um, sent the promise of the father, the indwelling of the Holy spirit to be the comforter. And there, there's so many different offshoots of, of the word of God all fits together so perfectly as you get to know him. Now we're going to go to Matthew chapter four and verse four. And we know that Jesus had to be taken into the wilderness and he was tempted there 40 days of the devil. Now, when you read the, through the gospels, it wasn't just like a 20 minute period of time where Jesus was tempted to the devil. He fasted. He was 40 days. He was tempted, I believe, and I don't think I'm reaching out too far on this one. I believe he was tempted on a continual basis for 40 days. And then Satan comes to him and he says some things. And then the Lord Jesus Christ says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, by physical food alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Okay. We're to know God's word and to put God's word on, not just in our minds, but to let it sink down into our hearts so that we can be 
clothed in truth, if you will. You know, the word of God says in, in Peter that we are a chosen generation, a peculiar people, and it says we're a royal priesthood. The priests are dressed in, uh, you know, magnificent clothing. Uh, just, I, I, I picture it as the, as being like being a king. I mean, we're not, we're not kings. We're, we're joiners of Christ and heirs, heirs of God. But you know, the master is dressed in fine raiment. And it's not, there's not anybody that's going to be lacking. Uh, if that makes sense, it's, you know, clothed in truth. It's like the, um, in Luke 19, the uh, parable, Luke 19 and Luke 18, the parable of the unforgiving father, I mean, the forgiving father, excuse me, or the parable of the uh, prodigal son. Apologize for that. He, when the son finally came back to him, hit the father, he was clothed, he um, clothed him, he gave him the coat, um, gave him the signet ring. They killed the fatted calf. They were excited to have him come back. He didn't say, well, now you, you've gone off and you've, you've muddied my name. Everybody out there thinks, you know, they know who, whose son you are. Um, I can't have this. You're, you're just going to be a servant. You're no longer my son. But when he says my son was dead, but now he lives, it's just, it, it's, it's a, a foreshadowing of, of going from darkness to light. Our lives were lost. We were lost out there. We need to have, we didn't have hope in our, in our lives. We, we were without, without God and without hope in this world says in Ephesians and we were enemies of God but now we're no longer enemies we're we're at one with the father okay well how do you do this you ask glad you asked that second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 this is a word that I used to really uh, not like when I was younger because it always showed that there was an effort involved and for my generation, which I'm not even going to go back and date myself, but uh, the word study was not a, a very popular word to use when I was in high school. It was more like party to show thyself having fun. But this one says study to show thyself approved unto who? Unto God. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Okay, that's works, right? Yeah, it is works to a certain degree. And I'll just finish up the verse. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, rightly dividing the word of truth is ortho to mounto. It's a, it's a right cutting. You go into a butcher shop and you, you want to have, uh, let's say you want to have a, a, a cut of steak. Do you want the butcher to just go up and just kind of, take his knife and just, uh, I'll go ahead and give you what I feel like giving you. No, you want the cut of steak that you want. You want the butcher to rightly divide that steak. God wants us to study to show ourselves approved as a workman that doesn't need to be ashamed as we rightly divide the word of truth. And why are there so many denominations if there's if, if God's word is of no private interpretation, why is there why are there thousands of denominations? Because everybody has added to the division of the word of truth. And I have a question for you. Why would the creator of the heavens and the earth uh, leave the rightly dividing of his word of truth to me or to you or to the priest down the street? The word of God itself interprets itself and there are many ways it does in the verse in the context and its prior usage okay now we're going to go to romans chapter five and this this is really one of the one of the most fantastic sections of of god's word romans chapter five i'm going to read 
read through verses 1 through 15, and then we're going to go back and talk about it a little bit. Therefore, being justified by faith. Okay, that word faith is a Greek word, pistis. Conviction of truth, reliance on Christ for salvation is what that word faith is the def has the definition of Con conviction of the truth reliance on christ for salvation and that's fantastic so we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of god and that's something it's already in whom we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand. In verse three, and not only so, we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Oh man, I don't want to go through tribulation. But you do. We do go through tribulation. And patience experience and experience hope. And hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. Shed abroad is flooded about. It's just like a flood of waters, like when the Nile floods. Verse 6, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. This is a good message here because this is and this explains what we're all about here. This is what we want to do is bring people back to the one true and living God through the work, the completed work of his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For scarcely, or for, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God, God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Wow. Justified by his blood? For if, when we were enemies, we're enemies. We were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received the atonement or at one -ment. Listen to this. Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world, that man being Adam, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. For until the law was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But as the offense, as of the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, Adam, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, had abounded unto many. That's a fantastic section right there. Talking about how sin entered the world by the disobedience of Adam. And God had, from the very beginning, a plan to reconnect the fellowship that was lost between man and God. And it's in, in the Old Testament, it's called the red thread. There's different in every Every book of the Bible references to Jesus Christ, his coming in the Old Testament and in when he came in the new till the day of Pentecost, when he sent the promise of the Father. And to this very day right now to where we have, we have access uh, to the Father um, and, and the Lord Jesus Christ stands in the gap for us, if you will. He's. Uh, forever making intercession for us according to the will of God. If um, the Lord Jesus Christ, as many seem to think, is no longer, you know, there are people that don't believe he ever lived. They don't believe in God's word. They don't believe that there, um, there was a Messiah or there was a need for man to be reconciled into God, which the word talks of over and over again. But once you understand these things, once you realize what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you, 
and died in your place. And while we were still enemies, we were reconciled by his shedding of blood. And he was in the grave three days, three nights. God raised him on the third day. And then after he appeared for many days, he ascended and he's seated at the right hand of the Father, as I said, making intercession for us. His ministry did not end when he ascended and sat. Um, in, in the, uh, the word sat shows completeness. Uh, it's, it's, he will come back, will, will be a rapture. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to come back. The dead of Christ will be raised. And we're going to meet him in the air, those that are alive and remain. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. You know, do I know when that's going to happen? No. But as my uh, brother Kevin Hopin says, the rapture will happen when the rapture happens. Give kudos out to Kev on that one. He's right on about that. And you're not setting a date either. Okay. By Christ's stripes, we were healed. Uh, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2. <clears throat> and in verse 24. Okay, now we know the Lord Jesus Christ came in John 10, 10 to, have, to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. Um, the adversary thought that he had won when he had the Lord Jesus Christ crucified. The word of God right here in 1 Peter 2, 24 says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Okay, that's past tense. In the Old Testament, it talks by whose stripes we, we are healed. We were healed. It's, it's something that's done. And I'm sure there are people out there asking, well, how come people still get sick? Because of sin. And because of the chemicals that are in the air and the things that we eat and drink. And, you know, um, everybody's dealing with, with some things. Uh, I, I just want to praise the Lord for uh, the good reports that I've heard this week on uh, different individuals that I know that have had to go through surgeries. I'm not going to be naming names or pointing out anybody's name on here. I wouldn't do that. But I'm very thankful for how the Lord works uh, within the medical community. Uh, I, I work in an area with elderly people, so I see it every day when I'm in there. Um, I'm thankful for many of the aspects of, of um, the medical world. A lot of them I, I'm not. I know maybe too much about them, but at the same time, I'm thinking to myself that, uh, you know, he, he did not have to do what he did. The Lord Jesus Christ, this is the, uh, he came and then he, as he grew up, he realized that he was going to have to go, what he was going to have to go through. And then what did he do toward the end there? And he took all his guys with him out to the garden. And he said, Father, is there any way that this uh, cup can be, uh, to, I don't have to drink of this cup. And is there some other way that we can do this other than me having to shed my blood? Um, he knew that he was going to be marred more than any man. He, re he knew Isaiah. He knew that he, the beating he was going to take. Yet he said, not my will, but thine be done. And it also says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, the shame of the cross. Um, he was a man's man. He, he, did, he did this because of love. The, the love of God is what calls you to repentance. I don't know. When you're watching this, just for a moment, think about that. Wouldn't you want to serve the Lord Jesus Christ who came and lived his life, selflessly lived his life, was nothing but love, just gave continually all the time he was giving. Even when he was dead dog tired, he was giving. And just realized what he was going to have to go through, still went through it, 
because of the joy that was set before him. And he saw the end product of it, the resurrection. And then he set it up on high. But this, this is not a, you know, we're not following cleverly devised fables. You can look up verses in, in Second Peter about that. But they were majesties. They were witnesses of his majesty. These guys, Peter doubted Jesus, you know. Um, he, he cursed people that were saying that he was with him. But yet, look at what, what happened to him after the day of Pentecost. Look at, look at what a dynamic man of God he became with the fire of the Holy Spirit within him. He was just, it's fantastic. You know, what changes a man like that from being full of fear to being full of faith? It's only the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that will change somebody like that. You know, I pray every day that I can be bolder. A lot of times I... I think that, you know, I just, I just might, I I'm, have a laid back manner about me. Maybe, maybe it's too much that way sometimes, but I know what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for me. And I, I'm, I'm truly thankful that he uh, has done what he's done for me. And I, I know that he can do the same for you. Um, he's, he's done so many marvelous things in the life of uh, all of us, uh, many of the guys here. On uptime, you know, from um, Bob Barber, Kevin, uh, Michael, uh, Greg, uh, his, Greg's family, his kids, um, my kids, my wife. It's just, you know, God's always doing stuff. We're not, you know, he's not, he hasn't gone out of business, folks. He really hasn't. And I want to show you that I want to go to a, a record to uh, kind of wrap up this, uh, this sharing. I want to go to Acts chapter three, and we're going to look at it's something that's really kind of exciting. We're going to read, we're going to go through, um, <coughs> excuse me, Acts chapter three, and we're going to read um, about 20 verses here. And we're going to go back and look at a couple of them. This is Peter and John. Uh, after the day of Pentecost, they went up into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, with John said, I'm sorry, buddy, we don't have any money today. You know, maybe tomorrow we'll do it. No. He said, look on us. Uh, the revelation was given to him that this was this man's time, look on us. Okay. And this is what Jesus Christ is, is doing right now. He looked to it, look to me, look on us, look to me and my father. We're the ones that are gonna, you know, your, your life is gonna be so much better, so much more worthwhile if you just, if you look to us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. That's a key right here. He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. He expected to receive. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. Okay, what's he going to do now? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Okay, this man was lame from birth. He could not walk. He had no, his, the muscles the, the muscles in his legs and his lower part of his body were not developed. He was lame. Okay. This is impossible for this man to walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Really? How did they do that? Was it magic? It was through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's ministering healing to him. And the man, and he leaping up stood. Okay, he for not, one thing, he never stood. Okay, this is such a sweet verse right here. I love this. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Okay, this guy had never walked, but he when he realized he had the strength, he leaped up, walked, entered with them, entered with them into the temple, Boy, he must really be asking for it, this guy. He was walking and leaping, and what was he doing? Praising God. Praise and worship is so 
paramount to healing. It, it go, these things all go hand in hand. Praise and worship is a, is a part of God's very nature. We, you know, you always hear the term praise the Lord, praise God. Praise is something that he desires and he's worthy of it. In verse nine, and all the people saw him walking and praising God. All the people, all the Sadducees, all the Pharisees, all the people there. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as a lame man which was healed held, held Peter and John, all the people ran toward together unto him. Them at the porch is called Solomon's greatly wondering. This is great because I, I always picture this as, uh, in my mind, as, as the man, uh, let's call him Samuel. He's healed. He's leaping up, standing, praising God, you know, and he's walking. People saw him walking into the temple. Uh, held Peter and John. He was in the middle. He had his right arm around Peter. He had his left arm around John. He held them, you know, he up to that point could not even walk. But now he was walking. He was leaping. He was praising God. And these men had ministered to him. And people were wondering. They said, Samuel, he said, what in the world happened to you? The people were greatly wondering. Okay. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power and holiness we had made this man to walk? See, they were looking to them. And they, you know, Peter could have said, hey, it was me and John. We're the guys, you know, we'll send you, we'll send you a prayer cloth and you, you put this in your pocket and you'll be healed. No. He's, he continues here. He says, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son, Jesus, whom ye delivered up and delivered, denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. Why is he saying this now? He's reminding them that by the power of this son of God, whom they agreed to have crucified, it's through his name that this man was whole. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. Does it sound familiar what's going on in the world today? It seems like the murderers are being granted clemency and the, and the, uh, the good people are the ones that are going to jail. Or is it just me? And in verse 15, and killed the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. What was the witness that they had? The power of the Holy Spirit in operation. And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him that hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Must have been from Southern Galilee. And now, brethren, I wot not through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before hath showed by the mouth of his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath also done what? Fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. He gave him a lesson in history. He took him back. He said, you guys were the ones. You know, Pilate was going to let him go. You guys determined. No, you wanted to get rid of him. Why? Because he was a threat. He didn't come boasting of himself. He came, he was doing the will of the father. He was, he was trying to get these people to realize who he was. The son of the living God. But the word says in verse 18 that he hath so fulfilled these promises. Now, do you think that Samuel, our 
named guy at the temple gate. I do. I gave the name of Samuel. Do you think that he was excited that he could get up and walk? It says he, it's so it's great. He, you know, it doesn't say he he got up quietly and realized, hey, you know, now I can walk. He says he leaping up stood. And he was leaping and, and he was praising God. He had been healed. A magnificent testimony of the power that's available today, I believe. Uh, I've heard a lot of stories of, of different things. And and there's many people that don't, do not believe or I'm, I'm not. I'm not belittling anybody by saying that. There's a lot of people, I'm going to say a statement, they're scared of the power of God. They truly are. Uh, they think, well, if um, if this really happened today, uh, things would change. Do, things do change when people stand on the truth of the word. Uh, there have been many, I believe many people that have been, uh, have been touched and blessed by... Uh, by the ministry of uptime over the last couple of years. I'm very thankful for Greg and uh, when God put that on his heart that he followed with it, followed up with it and continues to do it. Um, very thankful for being able to share the word with you this morning. Um, would really exhort you to, if you have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, that you'll do that today. Don't wait until tomorrow. Um, don't wait and until the middle of December and say, well, next year I'll start off fresh in January and I'll, I'll change my life. If there's, if you have problems, um, the man at the temple gate had problems all through the book of Acts, there's people that got healed of different diseases and uh, maladies and things like that. Uh, Jesus Christ can come and, and touch your life and, and, and show you a more abundant life. And as I've said many times before, none of us are going to come on here and say it's easy. Um, his burden is, uh, his yoke is easy, his burden is light. But we do have a yoke and we do have a burden. Many times the yoke that we have is that we stretch our out of our comfort zone and we go into things that we're maybe not so comfortable with and the burden we have i believe is that we want people to come back to the truth and god wills that all men be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth and um once again i want to thank you for spending a little bit of your time with me i know time is a valuable asset many people don't have a lot of it they're very very busy um, you can send me your comments or, you know, if you like what I was sharing, fine. If you don't, <laughs> it could still, you can still send me an email at HaganRW52 at yahoo.com. Um, I'm thankful for each and every one of you that's taken the time to watch today. Uh, there are many people out there that, that um, really need to have an answer in their lives. And uh, I believe that when Jesus Christ said that I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly, that he told the truth. And when he said in uh, John 14, 6, that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. I, I believe that's the truth. Um, I'm not being closed-minded. I, mean, I, I believe that the Father's love is all-encompassing and, and uh, it, it touches people all, all around the world no matter where you're going to be watching this or what time of the day you're going to be watching it. Um, it'll be uh, something that if you, if you give him a chance, he'll show you. And as I say, fasten your seatbelts because it's going to be, it's going to be quite a ride. So father, thank you for the day. And thank you for the people that'll be watching this teaching and blessing each and every one of them. And thank you for all you do for us. And we can, Continue to give you the praise and the glory in the name of the living Lord and Savior, our living Lord and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you down the road. Peace.